Hey, my name's Jill the Tender. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install some vinyl plank. Now, a lot of us might think that the floor prep is the hard part, or maybe the demo, or getting started, the layout, figuring out where to start, working around furniture, all of that is the hard part of installing vinyl plank. We've been put in our mind that this plank is the easiest plank to install ever. Anyone can do it. The truth is, is installing the vinyl plank is the hard part. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to get through doorways, how to start, go up to walls, things like that. The stuff that you really need to know. Let's get going. Now, vinyl plank has a tongue and a groove. This is the tongue side. Here's the groove side right here. Here's the groove side on the butt joint. Tongue side. Tongue side. We always want to face the tongue towards our starting wall. We always want to work away from the groove. So I'm going to be working away from the groove this way and this way. So that means I want to start this first plank towards that wall with the tongue facing that way and then down here at the end with the tongue facing the wall down there. This plank is really super easy to put together. If you just slide it in, get it down into the main joint, just hit your tapping block, lifting up just a little bit, get that part in first, and then work your way up. And then it'll fall down into place and it's all locked in. I want to show you a different way though if you struggle doing this, which I don't think you will, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And this is called the bridging method. So all you need to do is get your plank in here, slide it into the long joint, bring it back as far as you can. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the tongue to clear this. I don't want it to overlap this side, so I'm just going to stop it just short. Now it just falls into place, so it cleared that side. Take a scrap piece here, hook that on, Make sure it lays flat so it's locked in. Now we're gonna close that gap up, but first what we need to do is we need to use a spacer down on this end so that this plank won't move when we're hitting this. I just wanna stop and take a pause here and just point out this vinyl plank that I'm installing. This is Florette Modine Base. Just look at how realistic this plank looks. This is really a nice plank. I'm gonna talk more about it later on. So we need to have something in there, otherwise that plank is going to go tight up against the wall or fireplace. Now we're going to take a scrap piece with the tongue on it. We're going to lock it in there. We're going to take our pull bar and our dead blow hammer and we're going to hit the plank this way to close that gap up. see how that went closed. So that's two different ways that you can do this if you struggle putting the plank together. This way works really good, so does the other way. This way is obviously going to be slower than using the other method I've been sharing with you. So there's two different types of locking systems on how you install it. One of them is angle to angle, which I've been showing you up to this point. And then there's the drop and lock, which I'm going to show you right now. Now the myth out there is that drop and lock is so much easier to install. So people flock to it. I'm telling you, don't stay away from it because it's not a great locking system. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. If I pull on this, it pops out. If I pull on this, it doesn't pop out. <laughs> this is stronger. So you can see the drop and lock is a lot weaker. It comes apart very easily. Well, that causes problems over time. And you can even check online, look at different forms. One of the biggest complaints about this type of plank is that over time, that locking system gives up. It breaks or it just loosens up and now you're going to get popping or crunching noises under there your plank will gap it's really a common problem out there and that is why i like angle to angle because it's stronger it's going to hold together for you and you're not going to have those kind of issues but now i know some of you are still going to buy the drop and lock and i want to share a couple of tips with you that you can use to make sure that you put this plank together properly and that you don't have issues 
with breaking the locking system as you're doing it. So here, let's watch. So all we want to do is get this plank started inside the joint and then get it locked or in there, have it up at an angle. Once it gets into the channel correctly, just slide it back until you get this lined up correctly. Take your tapping block. Now it's all down flat. This is lined up right. Now I just take my mallet and get that in. Okay, one of the things that you can have a problem with is hitting these joints down on these drop and locks and this part breaking. So what you can do is get that in place and then take a scrap piece, stick it in there. Once you get this in correctly, and it's all locked in, now this will be perfectly lined up. Now just take your mallet and hit that down and it should go down there perfectly without any problems. Now let's go back to the angle to angle. I want to share with you how easy this is really to install. So I just slide that butt joint in and then I work my way down the plank. I do keep it at a slight angle. You can notice that I keep my hand underneath there to get a slight angle and then I come along it with the plank hammer. It goes right into place. Now the key is, is to have a good tapping block. This is one that I designed. It's called the plank hammer. I like it because it's not so big and bulky like the other ones I used to use. It weighs still a good amount of weight, two pounds. Has a really nice handle so you can grip it in different spots. Now I used to use a tapping block like this and I don't anymore because this one is just, it's big, it's bulky, it's all hard to handle, especially the handle being so big the block being so big. This one, it's a lot easier to maneuver, get different grips to be able to be delicate. Brute force. And just, it's really easy to maneuver because it's smaller. For this one, it's just hard. It's harder to get used to using this. Now I've used this tapping block for many years. This is actually a newer one, but I don't like this one anymore. I designed this one. This has became my most favorite tapping block. I think that as a DIYer, this is the most easy to use tapping block out on the market. So I wanna share the, how you can use the plank hammer one more time here. This will really come in handy when you get up to a wall and you're coming to the very end here. It's really sometimes hard to get the tapping block in there. With the plank hammer, you can just tip it over on its side. The handle allows you to get in there and get some good leverage to be able to put that second to last row in. Really works pretty slick to do that. Now I'm gonna also share a different tool with you here for this last row that we're gonna do and that's called the pull bar. This is something else that you wanna get that has some decent quality to it so that when you hit it, it doesn't bend. I would highly suggest that you buy something with decent quality. I'll leave a link below for these tools that I'm sharing with you in here um, in the description of the video. There is another tool that I use a lot. It's called a linoleum knife. This is something that you can pick up at any of the big box stores in the carpet department um, this is like one of the tools that I use the most in all of my arsenal really a good handy tool to have so now instead of us working away from the groove which is the proper way now we're gonna have to work away from the tongue makes things a little bit more challenging and there's an extra step in there it's not that this is hard, it's that it's a little bit more time consuming. It takes a little bit more to get used to, especially after you just installed a few hundred square feet or more going forward. So the tongue has no forgiveness to it because this is the part that actually plugs into the groove where the groove, when you hit this with the tapping block, that's just the bottom edge. The tongue actually inserts into the plank. So you can damage the groove a little bit and still put the plank together, but if you damage the tongue, it makes it really difficult to get the plank together. So, what I want to do is not use the tapping block on my tongue. I want to use a scrap piece that I put on and then use my tapping block. 
And you can see it's already laid flat for me. Now I'm going to do something, I'm going to make a bold statement here. Now I believe that using the scrap is what you need to do with most tools. But I believe with the plank hammer that I can deliver a delicate blow because of how easy this is to handle I can use finesse and not use that scrap piece and damage this tongue. Which saves you a lot of time. Just get it in the track. Plank hammer. Finesse, finesse. It's all about finesse. Now you see the difference is, is now I need to clear this locking system of the tongue so it's a bigger gap that we need to close up. So I set it down and you can see we have about a quarter inch gap. Now I'm going to just lift up at an angle and just tighten the gap up. It's still up, now watch as I go lightly with this and just use some finesse and it'll just fall down. You can see now it just falls right into place. There's no damage to the tongue whatsoever using the plank hammer. Now for the next piece, I'm gonna to try to slide it under. And you see how I have the sheetrock cut up here? That was so I could slide the plank as far as I can that way. Now I can clear the locking system here and I can start to bring the plank back. Now I'm just gonna lift up right here. I'm gonna get it locked into the butt joint. So that's locked in. Now I can lift up, get my hand under there, and start working this in with the plank handling. Now this is probably a spot right here to get this in that you're gonna wanna use your pull bar. And you can also use your plank hammer. I put a scrap piece on here, I'm getting my fingers under a little bit. I'm pressing down right here so that it's going to go into the locking system. Now I'm going to hit it. And you can see all that locked in now. So I didn't actually need to use the pull bar right there at all. So in this doorway, just like I was showing you in the other doorway, you might have noticed that I had a joint in the door. Now having a joint inside the, in somewhere inside the door makes it a lot easier for you to be able to get these plank into place. You can see I'm using the pull bar here. This is another reason why a good high quality pull bar is important. If you hit some of the pull bars that they sell at the box stores, like I'm showing you right now, it's going to bend, I guarantee you. Just don't even get yourself frustrated. These are the situations where you need to have a good quality pull bar. Now I have that first one in place. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to work this second one in and I need to try to get the butt joint started. So I have it close to where it needs to slide under. I'm using my linoleum knife now because it's a little short area here. It's hard to get it in place. You see how I'm working underneath it? Well then I was able to slide a little bit to get that joint started. And now I'm gonna use this pull bar and we're gonna hit this in place and get that joint locked up. For this next step I want you to see that I'm putting my hand underneath it's always good to get a little bit of an angle to get the joint started now that I got it started I was able to bring it back down flat and now I'm just using some good finesse here with the plank hammer to get that plank locked into place 
Now the majority of this is locked in. We still have a little bit there that's not quite getting in there, so I'm gonna use the pull bar to finish it off. And there you go, easy enough. So the plank that you see me installing inside this video is made by Florette. It's called Modine Base. Now the base is the lower of line of what Florette has to offer to sell, but it's still a really high quality plank. I think it's the best in its class as far as the price point goes. This stuff still has a 20 mil wear layer. It has this embossing texture on it. It has a lot of different patterns in there. And the embossing on here actually follows the patterns on the plank so it has a realistic look to it more than anything that I've seen out there now when you put install this and you look across the floor it's not going to have that fakey look to it like a lot of vinyl planks do Florette really came through with this vinyl plank and I think that this is the most budget friendly plank that is out on the market and like I said they'll compete with any of the plank at any of the box stores and the quality I think is far superior. Okay I want to stop right there because I want to tell you right now I want to be upfront about this I do work with Florette but I want to tell you I reached out to Florette about a year ago I heard a lot of good things about their products so I reached out to them to get some samples I tested some of their plank and based on the info that a lot of people were sharing with me I found this plank to be a very good plank as a matter of fact it's my favorite vinyl plank their products are and so I started promoting it and over the past year I haven't had any negativity from anyone about Florette and I just want to say thank you Florette for providing such great support and a high quality product to my viewers and I want to tell you that if you want, are interested in getting some samples from Florette you can click on the link below and use the coupon code so that's how I will tell you I do get a commission off of that and I want to thank you for that blessing and I also want you to know that if you decide to purchase some plank from them I would also get a commission on that thank you again for that blessing the reason why I promote Florette is because it is a good high quality product. They have support that is better than any other company I have worked with. And so that is why I support Florette. All right, so now that you got the tough part out of the way, the part where you know how to put the plank together, I shared a bunch of different stuff with you. I have another video right here, right above me, that's gonna share everything else with you. Where to start, how to start, plank direction, all sorts of different tips that you're gonna to wanna to use for your plank installation, so check that video out. My name's Joel the Tender. I wanna thank you for watching, and I pray that God blesses you and your family, and I pray for that in Jesus' name. Hey, I'll see you in the next video.